All right, let's get right into it. Tesla is right on the edge of releasing what it's calling one of its biggest software updates ever, full self-driving version 14. The hype around this thing is just massive, but what is actually going on under the hood? Is this the moment autonomous driving finally breaks through, or is it just another step on what's turning out to be a very, very long road? So the one number you see everywhere is this, 10x. That's the promised increase in the system's parameter count. Now, what on earth does that even mean? Well, in the world of AI, you can kind of think of parameters as being like the neurons and connections inside a human brain. So a jump this big doesn't just make the system a little bit smarter. It lets it understand way more complex and nuanced situations. We're talking about going from just seeing a person on the sidewalk to actually predicting what they're going to do next. Right, so a 10x improvement sounds incredible on paper, but what does it really mean when the rubber hits the road? You know, how is it going to change the feel for the person sitting in the driver's seat? And what kind of signal does it send to the rest of the car industry? That's the big question we're digging into. Okay, so first things first, let's unpack what Tesla is actually promising with V14. We've got to get past the headlines and really understand the deep, fundamental changes they're making to the software. And look, Elon Musk himself has been super clear about this. This is not just some minor patch or a bug fix. He's calling it a major architectural upgrade. Think of it less like updating an app on your phone and more like ripping out the entire foundation of a house and replacing it with something new. It's a total rewrite of how the car sees and thinks about the world. And this quote, this really gets to the absolute heart of the ambition here. Musk's stated goal, especially for the later 14.2 release, is to make the car feel almost sentient. Now that is a bold, almost sci-fi claim, right? They're aiming for a system that doesn't just mechanically follow a set of rules, but drives with a more intuitive, almost human-like feel. So to really appreciate why V14 is such a big deal, we need to zoom out for a second and look at the two competing philosophies in this whole race to build a self-driving car, because there are two very, very different schools of thought on how to get there. And here they are, side by side. In one corner, you've got Tesla. Their approach is all about vision, using only cameras, the same way a human driver uses their eyes. It's a beautifully simple idea that's focused on being able to scale up easily. But in the other corner, you have competitors like Waymo, who use what's called multi-sensor fusion. They take cameras, and then they add LiDAR and radar on top of it, creating multiple layers of data. It's like giving the car not just eyes, but a whole suite of superhuman senses for maximum safety and redundancy. Tesla has this really cool name for their method, Photon to Control. The whole idea is to create one single elegant AI model. It takes in the raw video from the cameras, that's the photons, and directly spits out the driving commands, the control, for steering, accelerating, braking. It's designed to cut out all the complicated middle steps, trying to mimic the direct way our brains work. Okay, so that's the heavy tech stuff, but let's bring this all back down to earth. How is all this tech and these different philosophies actually going to change what it feels like to be in the car? You can just feel the excitement building. The buzz from the user community is that this could be a genuine game changer. And we're not just talking about, you know, slightly smoother lane changes. The hope is for a real shift in that relationship between human and machine. We start to build genuine trust in what the car can do. It's about moving from feeling like you're supervising a student driver to relaxing with a confident chauffeur. And Tesla isn't just going to drop this massive update all at once. Nope, they've laid out a pretty clear three-stage plan. It kicks off with a wide release of version 14.0, and then they'll follow up with more updates a couple of weeks apart. This step-by-step -step approach lets them gather tons of real-world data and fine-tune things as they go, building up to that sentient goal of 14.2. But let's be honest, maybe the most anticipated change for current drivers is this one a promise for fewer nags. You know what I'm talking about. The idea is simple. As the car proves it can handle more and more complex situations safely, it's going to need less and less of that constant confirmation from you to jiggle the steering wheel. That could make the whole experience feel so much more seamless and way more like true autonomous driving. Now, this update isn't happening in a vacuum. Tesla's super aggressive push here is sending massive shockwaves through the entire automotive industry, and it's basically forcing everybody to pick a side and react. This chart just lays out the massive strategic split in the auto world perfectly. While a lot of the traditional car makers, the OEMs, have been playing it safe, focusing on driver assistance systems, Tesla is going all in on the moonshot, full autonomy, and a future fleet of robo-taxis.
And that just forces everyone else to look in the mirror and ask, are we moving fast enough or are we about to get left behind? And all this pressure is creating what some analysts are calling a winner-takes-most scenario. Think about it. Just like the smartphone market basically boiled down to iOS and Android, the autonomous vehicle market could easily consolidate around one or two dominant software platforms. The company that truly cracks the code first might end up licensing their tech to everyone else. The stakes are just unbelievably high. Because you gotta understand, for Tesla, this was never just about selling better cars. It's about a complete evolution of their entire business model. They started out as a car company, then they became more of a tech and software company, and their ultimate goal for 2025 and beyond is to become a mobility service provider with that robo-taxi network. Full self-driving is the master key that unlocks that whole future. But of course, and this is a huge but, the technology is only one piece of this giant puzzle. There are enormous roadblocks and regulatory hurdles that a software update, no matter how good, just cannot solve on its own. And man, that list of non-tech challenges, it is long. You've got this messy patchwork of different laws in different states and countries, incredibly complex legal questions about who's at fault in a crash, serious privacy concerns about all the data these cars collect, and maybe the biggest one of all, just building public trust. And that's all before you even get to the monumental task of proving the system is safe in every single scenario imaginable. I mean, just stop and think about this one for a second. If an autonomous car gets in an accident, who's to blame? Is it the owner in the driver's seat? Is it the car company? Could it even be the specific software engineers who wrote that piece of code? The entire legal landscape is a total minefield right now, and there are absolutely no easy answers. This whole situation puts regulators in a really, really tough spot. They have to do this incredibly delicate balancing act. On one hand, their number one job is to keep the public safe. But on the other hand, if the rules are too strict, they risk completely shutting down the innovation that could one day make our roads dramatically safer for everyone. It's a huge, huge challenge. So when you boil it all down, Tesla's FSD version 14 is so much more than just a software update. It's a catalyst. It's forcing all of us to deal with these massive questions about technology, about the law, and about trust. It's a fundamental shift in how we relate to our machines. And that leaves us with one final really important question. As our cars keep transforming into these powerful computers on wheels, are we actually ready for what comes with the next update?